This is 5-Minute Power Platform, where I'm doing short experiments in Dynamics, Flow, Power Apps, Azure, and more. And today, we're going to build a Magic 8-Ball, because I was looking for an excuse to play with the accelerometer capabilities within Power Apps, so you could detect whether the device is tilting or turning over. And also, uh, Canvas components, kind of a structured UI that's reusable, is a new feature, and uh, it's going to be important going forward, and I wanted to play with that as well. So this seemed like a good excuse to do it. When you're building something that's graphical, it's important to talk about how the graphics are layered. If you're building this along with me, you'll want to make sure that you layer your graphics in the same way I do mine. So let's first talk about the canvas component for the triangles. And it's going to consist of these three structures. The triangle, a label itself, and then a black lens on top. And these layer like this, so one on top of another. And then we're going to be able to change the transparency on the layer so that then we can make the triangle fade to black or, or fade clear so that it looks like it's going down into that eight ball jelly and back up. And so we're going to take this component, we're going to layer it in the overall app. And so this is the component triangle we're just looking at. And what we're going to do is we're going to take then uh, the background of the app and turn it black. We're going to label the, we're going to move that triangle on top of it. And then we're going to put the magic eight ball on top. And that way it'll look like as the triangle moves around and it's moving around inside the magic eight ball. And then on top of everything, we're going to put the back of the eight ball. We're going to make that visible only when the phone turns over. So when it turns over, it looks like you see the back of the eight ball and you come back and you get a new message. So we'll start by creating a new app. We'll do a phone size app here and we'll call it 8-Ball. And then once it loads, we'll rename the screen. I'm going to try to stay as close as possible to the recommended naming conventions just to start putting those into effect. And naming the screen is important for accessibility. So I'm going to name it 8-Ball here. And I'm going to add some labels here. I'm going to add three for debugging just so we can kind of see how the acceleration uh, is measured on the phone or on the device. And so I'm going to add three, one for the X direction, one for the Y, and one for the Z. And so we'll get those added in here. We'll update them each so they're measuring the appropriate direction and rename them and get them positioned. And we'll leave these on here until the end, just so we can kind of get a feel for what these values look like. So we'll have the Z one on. I'm going to group these so they're easy to work with. Give the group a name, call them debug labels. Now let's save this, call it eight ball. And then let's run it and check it out. And so you can see that as you move it left to right, Along the X axis, you see X goes from about zero to 10. To get it above 10, you really have to shake the phone. And as you tilt it up, Y goes to positive 10, tilt it down, Y goes to negative 10. And then the Z axis, you see it's positive when it's facing up, about a positive 10, flip it over, goes to about negative 10. So those are the values we're gonna be working with as we build our eight ball. So now I've got these images here, the ones that are reviewed at the beginning, we're gonna load those into the media. So I'll browse there, grab those. And then let's start by putting on the first image. So this image is going to be the, uh, the ball back, the ball front, sorry. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to make this the same size as the, uh, as the screen itself. And so we're going to automatically size it to the screen. And as power up starts to, uh, allow us to do more responsive designs in different sizes, it's a good practice to kind of tie these heights and widths and other sizes to the container they're in, and that gives us resizing. And as we start to build the component, we'll be doing a lot of that. So we'll turn our form background to black, and then we'll turn the center of our eight ball black because the image is on front of it. And then we'll set the, let's just move that group to the front so we can see our debug labels. So now let's create our triangle image component, our canvas component. To do that, we'll have to turn this on in app settings, advanced settings at the very bottom components. This is in preview still. If you're watching this a few weeks from now, you might not have to do that, but that'll turn on this canvas tabs right here. I'll click a new component. We're gonna create a new component. We'll call it Calm Triangle. And we can start adding on UI elements to that now. Let's add on the triangle image itself. So it's gonna be the little, the little uh, pyramid shaped thing that's inside of the eight ball. So we'll turn that on and we'll rename it Image Triangle. Now, one thing we'll notice here is that our component our triangle itself is 320 by 320. Our component is bigger than that. So let's resize the components so they're the same size and center that. So now let's go to components and insert this component on the, on the main screen itself. Now what you'll notice is when I resize it, the component resizes, but the triangle doesn't. So we're going to need to tie the dimensions of the triangle itself to the overall components. So let's try to tie the width to the overall component width. And we'll tie the, tie the height to the overall component height. And if you've done like BB forms or some Swift apps on iPhone, you've done similar sort of things trying to tie the UI together. And see so now it resizes pretty well, um, but it still stays in proportion. We may want to make it a little more flexible, change the uh, image position to stretch. And now when we go back to the screen, we can see that as we stretch it now, it stretches pretty well. It behaves a little more intuitively. Okay, so now let's add in the label. This will be the message that gets shown on this uh, within the eight ball. And we'll rename that uh, label message. We'll change the color to white so it shows up on the triangle on the blue. And then we'll set a few other properties. Let's reduce the line height so we can pack a little more text in this small area. 
set it on auto height. We'll check that the wrap is set. It is, it looks good. And then we'll do a vertical line top and horizontal line center. And then that should help help it start to look a little better. But uh, well, let's check it out here. And I think we're gonna see that we still need to do a few more properties to tie the label to the uh, dimensions of the component that it lives within. And so let's start with the X and Y. And so we'll go to the X of the label here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna tie the X so that we're basically aligning centers of the label and the triangle. And so we'll do that by taking the width of the triangle, the component, and the width of the label. And then we're going to divide them by two. And then that's going to essentially align the centers of the label and the component. And then for the Y, what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, top of the triangle and we're going to look go about 20% uh, of the way down, 25% of the way down. And then what that'll do is then that will take the uh, label so that it's always about a quarter of the way down the triangle. So we're about take the, take the height and multiply it by 25%. We can see that it's, that's doing a little better job of keeping everything in place. So it's staying centered and staying about 25% of the way down. Now, of course, the font needs to adjust as well. And so let's go down. We'll change the size property. That's for the font size. And uh, through some playing around, I found that if you take the height of the triangle and multiply it by about 0.07, the font tends to stay in about the right, right size. We see now it's drinking and it's growing. So now it's behaving a little more like we would expect it to. So let's make one more change to this and let's set the width of the label to be about 70% of the triangle's width. That way we won't risk getting it extended over too much into the border so it kind of stays centered in the triangle. And so now our uh, text part should be pretty good and then we're ready to add on the black lens on top of this. And this is what's gonna make it look like it's fading into the eight ball jelly. So I just put an image on top. We're going to label it to the square area lens. It was just a black image. We'll label it image lens. And then again, we'll tie the height and width to the height and width of the component itself. So the com triangle width is going to be set to the, the lens width will be set to the com triangle width. And the lens height will be set to the com triangle height. And so now the lens is there. So now we need to set the values for the lens. In particular, we need to set its transparency. That's really what the lens is there for. And so we need a parameter. And so we can add a new custom property over here on the right, we'll call that transparency. And that's a value that we'll feed into this component. And then our component will then feed that to the transparency of the lens. So that's gonna be a number and we'll create another property. And this is gonna be the message that gets displayed. And so that's gonna be a, a string property, also input. And so let's go to the lens here. We'll set the transparency to the component triangles, transparency itself. And that's currently zero. And so that's why it went away. And then for the text of the label message, We'll set that to com triangle dot message the property we just created and that allows us to feed in a triangle a message that will get populated on the triangle so now let's actually uh, implement our component over here and so we've got it we'll resize it centered in the eight ball uh let's see it got the default name there let's rename it com message for this particular instantiation of the component and you see because it's layered below the front of the ball as i move it around it looks like it's uh, moving around within these with, within the eight ball which is what we want so now let's do some centering position on the x for this component and so what we're going to do is we want it to, uh, we're going to calculate the center of the front of the eight ball. And so that's the uh, width of the eight ball. We're going to divide it by two. And then uh, because the X is the left end of the component, then we'll take the width of the component, divide it by two, and that'll get us where the left end should be in order to be centered in the eight ball. We'll do something equivalent for the Y. We'll take the height of the ball and divide that by two. And then we'll take the uh, components height and divide that by two. And so it's gonna give us uh, the top end of the component so that it's centered within the eight ball. And we can test this here if we manually uh, change the size of the component here, we'll change it to 400. You see it stays centered even though it resizes. And so that's all good, so let's undo that. So now let's do some acceleration math to move this around. And so here from the centered position, what we'll do is we'll take the X acceleration, which goes uh, negative as you tilt the, top, the left end of the phone up and positive as it goes the other way. And we're going to divide that by eight, which is a number I just kind of played around with to figure out the right value. And then we'll multiply that by the distance it can go to get to the end, which is the width of the ball front divided by two. We're going to do something equivalent for the Y. And what happens with the Y is as the, you raise the top of the phone, the Y goes positive. So we're going to subtract this value because we want Y to get lower. So we're going to subtract that positive value, divide it by eight, multiply it by the width of the ball. Let's publish this and test this. And let's see if the uh, triangle is moving back and forth as we would expect. So we'll do a refresh of those apps, load it up, and you can see here as I tilt the phone, you can see as I tilt the top up, goes up, left goes left, right goes right. So it looks like it's floating around in that uh, Magic 8 ball jelly inside, which is what we wanted.
So now for one of the trickier parts. We want the lens in front of the uh, triangle to fade to black if we tilt the phone uh, steeply in one direction, and we want it to be clear when the phone is sitting flat. And so we'll do that by setting the transparency property of the component, and we're going to set that to the average of the absolute acceleration in the x and y direction. So that means if we tilt it severely in the x or y direction, this number is going to get bigger, and it's going to uh, make the transparency reduce. We'll do Actually, we'll do 1 minus this, so that way the transparency of the lens in front will reduce. And that means it'll turn black. And so the steeper we turn the phone, the blacker that lens is going to get. And it's going to look like the, the triangle is fading into the jelly. But when the phone's flat, it's going to be clear. And we're going to be able to see the triangle clearly. So let's test it out. So here we'll refresh the app again, load it up. And so we can see as we tilt the phone, it kind of fades to black. So it looks like it's going into the uh, Magic 8 Ball mystery fluid and kind of floating away. But when the phone is flat and the thing is centered, we can see it more clearly. So it kind of looks like it's coming up to the surface. So I created the messages in a collection here, so it's easy to add and remove messages. Uh, and I gave each one an ID. Since we don't really have a way of indexing arrays or collections, I just created an ID to index them. And we're going to use a random number to kind of choose between these different index values. And then beside each index is a message, and this is going to be the text that's going to show. And so let's implement this next. So in our screen's on visible event, we're going to initialize this call messages collection. And so here I'll just paste in the JSON, the same... Uh, JSON that you just saw in the PowerPoint. I'm going to set that to a collection called call messages. And next, let's initialize a variable, a global message index variable, so that when this thing first loads, we kind of set our, we can pick a random message. So we're going to call this global message index. And what we're going to do is we're going to round down a number between 0 and 3 by taking a random number, multiplying it by the number of rows in this collection, and then rounding it and then pulling off any, uh, any decimal point. So it's going to go between 0 and 3. And that'll correspond then to the IDs that have been set in the four rows in the collection. We'll set the message here to be the uh, lookup. And so what we'll do is we'll take that collection and we'll look up based on the ID, the ID that matches the uh, global message index. That'll return us one message and we'll set that value to be the message in the triangle. And then just for testing here, we'll take a, we'll do the on select on the front of the ball and we'll set it to that same um, same global message index so that we can then iterate through the messages by tapping on the front of the ball and that allows allow us to test out to make sure all the indexing is working. So let's save it and publish it again. Let's give that a shot just to see if we can get a real message showing in and iterate through them. So we'll refresh the app, open it up. We can see there, look, we've got clear collections of message. If I tap it, we can see beware delegation and we're seeing your trial expired. So the messaging is working. The final thing to do is make the back of the ball show when we flip the phone over. And so let's add in another image, and this will be ball back. We're going to put this on the very top of everything else, so it's going to be the top layer. And then we'll uh, set that same thing. We'll set the x and or the width and the height to be the width and the height of the screen, so the uh, eight ball screen. So we'll set the width equal to the width of the screen and the height of this image equal to the height of the screen, just to kind of tie them together. And then we'll set the image to be the ball back. And so now that see that covers up the eight ball. And so what we want to do is we want to make sure that this image is only visible when the phone is upside down. And so that's when the Z acceleration goes negative, then the phone is upside down. So when acceleration dot Z is less than zero. And then also we're going to move uh, the global message index, the ability to switch the messages to the ball back. So we'll flip it over. And when you tap the back, then we'll get a new message. So the on select for the image ball back is going to get that uh, global index set. Let's turn off the visibility for the debug labels, clean up a little bit there, and then let's save and publish this, and we'll give it one last test. Refresh the app and load it up. Let's see here, it looks like we've got uh, Outlook 365 good. We've got our message there. Now if I flip it over, you can see that. I just do a little tap there and I get a new message. And I've got a new message, and every time I flip it over, then you'll see that the back of the ball will show, not that you can see it. And then you tap it and you get a new message. And so the, ball, the eight ball is working uh, as designed. So hopefully this was a useful, um, useful for you as a way to learn some of the things I was looking at experimenting with, which is the ability to uh, access the accelerometer on the device and also um, start to explore Canvas components, which is going to be an important feature going forward uh, for anybody building Canvas apps and it's going to make them a lot easier to scale. Thanks for watching.